wonderful. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good to see everyone. Happy spring. Spring has sprung. It's so beautiful out there with the colors. It's green. The warmer weather. Well, maybe not today. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. Some announcements to begin. Uh, we have our concert event this afternoon at 6 p.m., or this evening, really. 6 p.m., um, traditional Korean music in honor of Asian American Pacific Islander Month. Uh, don't miss it. It's going to be a wonderful show. I'm so looking forward to it. That's tonight at 6. Uh, at the end of the month, we also have another Gospel Through, the, through Music and the Arts pro, uh, program. Uh, it's the, a paint night, another paint night. This has been very successful bringing a lot of new, new folks to the church uh, and together pursuing art and being creative. I think that's a good thing. That is May 31st at 6 p.m. again. That's a Friday. Uh, we do ask that you RSVP if you would. Uh, it's $10 for adults. Uh, children are, are free. Well, they're free for that program. They're very expensive otherwise. <laughs> But for that program, they're free. Um, any other announcements? So we're, we're, we're entering a sort of summer season, and it starts to get a little slower around here, but there's still always things going on. Don't forget the Bible study Wednesday night. That's been a very wonderful conversation. We had our, at least since I've been here, our, our, our record attendance of eight people. <laughs> Humble, but great. Uh, but if you'd like to join that, please, please uh, do. It's wonderful. And then Panera Club, Wednesdays at 10, and the Rebel Dog Cafe Club, Thursdays at 10. One day we'll, we'll maybe combine the two on Friday. How about that? That sounds like a good thing. Anyway, anyway, anyone else with announcements before we begin? Yes. Thanks for that work. All right. So let us uh, take a deep breath, feet firm into the ground, the sacred ground. Remember where we are, why we're here. And let us join together in the worship covenant. O oh God, we covenant to worship you with our whole being this morning. We give to you our vulnerabilities and humanness and pray you will encompass us with the light of your grace. We look to your perfect compassion, which we pray will fill us in turn, O oh God, as we worship you in word, in song, and in truth. Amen. Let us sing together this morning, number 240 in your pilgrim hymnal, your red hymnal, pilgrim hymnal, come Holy Spirit, heavenly God.
the amens at the end of the hymnals, the hymns and the pilgrim hymnal. It's always beautiful. This opening prayer is from a poem titled Invitation by Mary Oliver. Let us pray. Oh God, you've allowed us time to linger for just a little while out of our busy and very important lives, to recall in our mind heart those goldfinches gathered in a field of thistles for a musical battle to see who can sing the highest note or the lowest or the most expressive of mirth or the most tender. Their strong, blunt beaks drink the air as they strive melodiously, not for your sake and not for mine, but for you, O oh God. And not for the sake of winning, but for sheer delight and gratitude. Believe us, they say, it is a serious thing just to be alive on this fresh morning in the broken world. I beg of you, do not walk by without passing to attend to such as these, these ridiculous performances. It could mean something. It could mean everything. It could be what the poet meant when he wrote, you must change your life. With God's help, you must. Amen. May it be so.
It's okay to say amen after something like that. Amen. <laughs> Service Blanket Sunday. Your $10 gift to World Service will allow Church World Service to supply a blanket to somebody throughout the world to whom a blanket means much more than a way to dress up a bed. I'm going to ask you to use your imagination <clears throat> and aided by this demonstration, think of all the ways Church World Service blankets can be put to use all over the world in times and places of natural and man-made disasters. And think of how you use them in your own house, because every example we give, all of the children in the congregation and all of the adults have used the blankets in their own household or at a picnic or whatever to have the same function. A blanket can be a one-size-fits-all thing. It takes a little folding if you're shorter. <laughs> yep. And in a pinch, it could wrap up more than one person. <laughs> a blanket can provide a place to lie down. And we'll, yeah, I don't think people can see because of the TV and cable, but just put it in your imagination. A blanket on the ground to lie down. And to mark it's a personal space as well as a little softness between you and the hard floor or the damp earth. A rolled up blanket can be a pillow or a bath list. She doing well? Okay. A blanket can be used to carry your belongings. If you gather the corners, all both of you will probably have to do that. It can make a great tote. And if you had two blankets and a stick, you could put one bundle on each end and put the stick across the shoulder and carry twice as much. Mm -hmm. With the help of a length of rope, a blanket can be a tent or a lean-to, or a curtain providing a little privacy in a crowded refugee camp. And I'm sure all of you who have children or the children have set up these areas in your own household to have your tent to be in. A blanket can cradle a child. And a blanket can provide comfort as well as warmth to a person of any age. And I'm sure all of us, I have a blanket that I put over my lap at night when it gets chilly and I'm watching TV. And all of our children have had blankets that were special to them. Surely you remember a time when you covered someone you love with a blanket. Surely you remember a time when someone you love tucked in a blanket a little tighter around you. You can give the same comfort to someone you have never met for just $10. Today and next Sunday, the Community Care Mission Outreach Team members will be in the narthex. Uh, we have mother, we have cards that are appropriate, they say inside, that you've given a compassionate gift of a blanket through church service. They don't just limit it to Mother's Day. 
Last year, 33,000 blankets were distributed by Church World Service throughout the world. Church World Service Blanket Sunday is next Sunday. This is your mission in mind. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Good to see you. All right, very good. It's, we'll never think about blankets the same way, I don't think. What a gift they are. All right, so we're going to honor some folks this morning, some longtime members of our church, uh, 50, members of 50 years or more. And um, you have an insert in your order of service. And you can see those names. I'm going to read them. I'm, I'm not so good at math on the fly, but you can see that some are, have been members more than 60 years, uh, is, I think, if I'm counting correctly. Uh, Albert Seeds has been a member since 1947. Ruth Seeds since 1948. And you can stand as I say your name, actually. I'm sorry. They met at church, at Sunday school, I believe. They taught. <laughs> Mary Buxton Fuller, a member since 1960. Beverly Bray Batendra, since 1960 as well. It's confirmation class together. <laughs> uh, Claire Ann Parker, since 1962. We love Claire Ann. Uh, Lynette Williams Susco since 1965. Pamela Williams Thomas since 1968. Carol Peters Mason, who is not here with us, I believe she's in Florida, maybe, since 1969. Bonnie West Masaryk and, uh, since 1971, and Diana Philpott Drakenberg since 1971 as well. Just not to make them feel old, but that was my birth year. <laughs> <laughs> but you look better than I do, so no complaining here. Uh, Carol Munson Peterson since 1973. I know she's in Florida. She was here last year. And then Marilyn Borey, since 1974, as well as Herve Latendra, since 1974. So what, what an accomplishment. <laughs> and we're going to honor you this, this morning uh, with a litany that I, you can remain standing at, actually, if you could. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Let us join together as a congregation to thank them with these words. We give thanks for your presence among us. You are living examples of courage and perseverance. We give thanks for the stories you have collected through the years by sharing your stories. You help shape ours. We give thanks for the many tasks you have undertaken for the betterment of others and of this community. We know that we have all benefited from your gifts and your labor. We covenant this day to do what it takes to make your continued participation possible. Your presence matters. We will seek to listen carefully when you speak. Your stories matter. We will seek to carry forward the work of this community that you helped build and shape. Your contributions matter. We promise to journey with you in the years to come and to support you in ways that you deem helpful. Your life matters. You matter to us, and we know that we matter to you. Let us be grateful for the gifts that come as generations meet and mingle. Because in this community of memory, caring, and hope, infused with God's love, we believe that love matters most of all. Amen. Well, we have some gifts for you, and Nicole will introduce that. 
You can see, be seated. We know where you are. <laughs> Thank you. We wanted to take this morning, I know this is probably a little bit, you know, saying the same kind of thing, but it's important for the kids to acknowledge what you have created in the foundation here in this church and appreciate everything that you have done. And uh, the kids uh, today have, uh, let me start by saying, uh, today we gather here with gratitude to honor an exceptional group of individuals. These individuals have, have over five decades. Uh, of, of support. They're the foundation of our church. They're the ones we turn to when we're making hard decisions like, are we going to do the steeple? Or are we going to paint the walls? Are we going to do this? What did our ancestors want? You have that knowledge, and these kids have the knowledge of the future. And together, we are a good community, right? We, we need each other, you know? Uh, the kids want to take this opportunity today just to say thank you. They have made a little something. Um, and as I say your names again, if you could just raise your hands, and they'll come through and deliver a little something for you, if that works. Uh, one moment. We'll go right over here. I just wanted to mention something. at. All these years, these five decades, these are all still active members in the church community. You know, you have to think about that. That's years and years. You, you heard that they met in Sunday school as teachers. They, they, you know, they sang in choir together. It's amazing how our lives can start here in this congregation, right? And I want to thank everyone for that as well. Um, I want to thank these Albert and Ruth Seeds. Can you go to the book, Savannah? Right over there in that corner. Mary Buxton Fuller. Beverly Bray Latender. Claire Ann Parker. She's not here today, but we do miss her very much. Lynette Williams Susco. <laughs> Pamela Williams Thomas. Bonnie West Masrick. I have a special one for you, Bonnie. Your grandkids made. Here you go. <laughs> Diana Philip Drakenberg. Marilyn Boy. Bory, sorry. Herb Latender. you're appreciated and we want to say thank you for all your years and we look forward to just continuing on uh, may God's blessings continue to light your path and your journey here at the church you're our foundation like I said we need you and and God bless you thank you for all that you do response to our invitation that went out to all of our 50 plus members. This response came back from Carol Peterson in Florida. It touched my heart and I hope it will yours. I received your gracious invitation today, which I truly appreciated. Unfortunately, I will not be in Connecticut this year, so I will be unable to attend. It was such a blessing last year to be in Connecticut for three weeks last spring to assist my sister 
following her knee surgery and the celebration of membership milestone service was scheduled for the morning of my return flight to Florida. It was wonderful seeing everyone and catching up, especially Charlotte, who is no longer with us. With regret, I am unable to attend the Sunday, May 5th worship and celebration this year. It means a lot to me to be invited to join the gathering, and I wish everyone a wonderful day. Congregational Church of Plainville will always be near and dear to my heart. It is very, very important that it remains a beacon of hope and faith in the town of Plainville. Love, Carol. Wonderful. Thank you. This is the central part of this service. We're here because of Christ. And this is a beautiful thing. Uh, all of the, those names that you had mentioned, they're here because of Christ. And we should never, never forget that. My introduction basically amounts to this, that this table is for all of us. Christ meant it for all of us. He wants us to join together, partake of his spirit as a community, and know that he is with us. Christ is with us. God through Christ is with us. And so we come and we remember what it's all about. Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke that bread and said, this is my body broken for you, and he passed the bread to his disciples, as we will do now.
oh God, just as this broken loaf was scattered over the hills and having been gathered together, became one in like fashion. May we, your church, be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Because <coughs> yours is the glory and the power through Jesus Christ forever. The body of Christ, the bread of life, let us be in remembrance of our way, truth, and life, our Jesus Christ. In like fashion, after supper, he took the cup and poured the juice and said, This cup is the new covenant effected by my lifeblood. And he passed the cup to his disciples, as we shall do now. <laughs> God, just as this juice comes from a gathering of grapes grown on a vine rooted deep, in like fashion may we be rooted in the vine that is Christ and bear good fruit together as we look to your kingdom. Praise Praise the Lord. Lord.
Jesus Christ for our The lifeblood of the, of the new covenant, the cup of wholeness, in remembrance of our Lord Jesus, our way, truth, and life. And may we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, thou hast known our joy. 472. sake of time, I'm going to read our psalm for this morning, and I'll post the psalm and song on our Facebook page, and maybe send it out in this week's weekly steeple. But our psalm is a beautiful one, Psalm 98. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for the Lord has done marvelous things, 
His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known God's victory, has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. God has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. All the earth break forth into joyous songs and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with a lyre, with a lyre, and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the Lord. Let the sea roar in all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord, who is coming to judge the earth, judging the world with righteousness and the people with equity. For our gospel reading, we turn to John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one life, one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called to you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The good news of God. Thanks be to God. This is uh, the first sermon, meditation, in a series of them based on questions I've received. Uh, I haven't received a whole lot of them, but enough. So um, this is the first of four, I believe. Uh, next week I'll be looking at uh, liberation theology. Someone had a question about that. So I'll be delving into what that is. And then there's also a, maybe a couple of messages on the book of Job. Which is a very uh, hefty book um, with a lot of truths and a lot of difficult conversations. So we'll, we'll delve into that maybe for two weeks uh, in the middle of May. But this message uh, is based on a question I received about others and people of other faiths and Christ and salvation through Christ. A uh, very difficult <laughs> question. Um, so, non-Christian religions and how they fit in the Christian idea of salvation. Are the faithful of other religions saved? Do faithful Buddhists, for example, go to heaven? If so, how? Where does Christ fit in if, using our example, faithful Buddhists indeed go to heaven? Great questions, uh, important questions, difficult questions. In the end, God knows the heart, and God, in God's wisdom, has the answer, the answers to these questions. But here's my best take on it. So whenever a, a topic like this comes up, 
And it's not a new topic at all. An ardent Christian based in the more evangelical tradition, the more traditional version of the faith, will bring up this verse from John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. In other words, only Christ saves. Unless Christ is involved, the non-Christian faithful are kind of doomed, <laughs> if you really take it literally. The Bible says so, our evangelical brothers or sisters would say. Now, I don't wholeheartedly agree with this approach, <laughs> but I do think we must account for Christ as Christians if we are to consider the Bible as authoritative. You're not obliged to do that for, sure, for certain, but I consider it or, or authoritative, the Bible, so I start from that this morning. At the same time, I believe those of faiths outside of Christianity will be included in God's kingdom. A faithful, loving Buddhist, a faithful, loving Muslim, a faithful, loving Samaritan, and they still do exist, will be included in God's kingdom if love applies. At the same time, Christ is central to this inclusion. To me, Christ is central to this inclusion. Both can be true and are true for me. And to show how this works for me, I introduce a couple John 3.16s, one you know, I'm sure, and one maybe you don't know or don't know as well. The Gospel of John is the one you know, John 3.16. It says what? For God so loved the world that God sent his only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is the central Christian teaching. Belief in Christ saves us from perishing and allows us everlasting life. But that word belief, we should understand it a little more fully to understand what Jesus is getting at. The Greek word is pistis. And it probably better translates as entrusting oneself to, to entrust oneself to, as opposed to belief, which is sometimes too intellectual for what Christ meant. To entrust oneself fully to. That's the meaning of pistis. Whoever entrusts oneself to Christ will not perish. Another note about John 3.16 from the Gospel of John. It, it, it was said and was true before the cross. We sometimes forget that. And Jesus is saying this before the cross has happened. That happens in John 19, this is John 14. But the love that Christ has for all was there in John 14. The greatest love willing to lay down his life to save, that was there in John 15. It was there in John 9, we just read that. Another note, uh, so that it, this, the greatest love willing to save all was there in John 14. That was there in John 14, and, and it's this utter selfless love that Jesus speaks about from our gospel reading, a love that's willing to lay down one's life, that selfless love. That's what gives way to the cross. It's there, it's there before the cross. And in some ways, it's most essential. It is this, this selfless love that saves. Entrusting oneself to this selfless love 
means everlasting life. Here's another John 3.16 that makes this clear. The other John 3.16 is from 1 John 3, verse 16. And that verse says, We know love by this, that Christ laid down his life for us. Again, love is defined by sacrificial, selfless love. In other words, and it also means this, that just as God is love, so is Christ. Important to remember, Christ is love. In the Christian story, in Jesus, love became flesh, and dwelled among us in Jesus, love laid down his life for us because Christ is love. The essence of Christ Jesus should not be mistaken or ignored. The essence of Christ Jesus is love. And love in essence is self-sacrificial. Jesus says love could not help but to lay down his life for us, because that's what love, at its most central, in its most central meaning, that's what love does. That's what perfect love does. So let me say that again, because I think it's really important. The essence of Christ is love. And love, in essence, is self-sacrificial. Love lays down all for us. So 1 John 3.16 helps us to rephrase John 3.16 this way. Love so loved the world that love sent us a love in the form of Christ Jesus. Whosoever entrusts oneself to this love will not perish, but have everlasting life. To put it in the simplest and purest terms, love, self-sacrificial by nature, saves us. As for the faithful Buddhists, the faithful Muslims, the faithful Samaritans, with love, Whosoever entrusts oneself to the God of God and the Christ who is love will not perish, but have everlasting life. I realize this is a bit theological, too, maybe too complicated, and I know I can get too, too nuanced and philosophical for my own good. It's a hard question to ask, answer. So let me put it this way. God is love, as is Christ. I think we have verified that. Whoever is truly loving indicates to me that God, Christ, love is in them. Someone who is truly loving, compassionate, from the core, indicates to me that God, Christ, love is there. They might not know it. They might not even accept those terms. But that's fine. Whoever is truly loving is in, is in God's eyes good, for God knows the heart. I know some may be asking, what about the cross here? So to close this meditation, I say this, the cross is the perfect portrait of the greatest love, the one that lays down all. Love itself in the form of Christ lay down his life for friends, and whoever is loved like that is no longer an enemy but a friend. What a greater love than this. And love's selfless sacrifice on the cross transforms whoever 
encounters that love. For those crushed by the world, those weighed down by life and seeking a way out, for those struggling with the way of selfless love and forgiveness, that encounter with love embodied on the cross transforms us, remakes us, and turns us around. Breathing this love in, we are changed from the inside out. And this love working through us, and as this love works through us, we can't help but to be loving ourselves. So I say it again, love saves. All that is not love, all that is hateful, in the end it is finished. The cross assured us of that. Amen. All right. Anyone have a joy, a sorrow, a concern to share this morning? Yes, Marilyn. I'm so, sorry, sorry. Two of my nephews have graduated from college. Oh, good. Maryland's, a couple graduates in Maryland's family. Amen. Anyone else? Yes, Ruthie. To the family of David Crandall, who was a longtime friend, um, who passed when he died last week. Marilyn Crandall. David. David Crandall. He passed away. Be praying for the family. Anyone else? Yes, Frank. Um, I'm going to try to share this without getting too emotional. <laughs> I had an experience a couple weeks ago, one Saturday morning. Um, I, I, I like to have my coffee and watch an episode of The Chosen or something mm -hmm. uh, inspiring. Beautiful. And um, as I was praying, thanking God for this, just when, when I see love, I I love love. I <laughs> And since I was a kid, every time I prayed, it was either thanking God for something or asking him for something. Mm. And it dawned on me that morning, God wants us to love him with our heart, soul, and mind. Mm -hmm. And realizing that, that I, I don't remember ever saying to God in a prayer, mm -hmm. I love you. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, as I was praying, I said, God, I love you. Mm -hmm. As if he was sitting there, and I knew he could hear me. I knew mm -hmm. I, he was there. Mm -hmm. And as, as soon as I said that, the warmth, I felt like he hugged me. Oh, and it, it just. That's beautiful. Amen, Frank. You were just talking about love. And yeah, amen, Frank. That's beautiful. Thanks for sharing. Wow. Thank you. That's a transformative moment, folks. That's what it's all about. Anyone else? Yes. Yes. Yes, be praying for the fray checks. Michael passed away this past week, and uh, I know it's a very difficult time for them. Our prayers are with you. If you can attend the, the memorial on Tuesday at 5.30 at the Plain Bowl Funeral Home, please do that and visit with them before. That would be wonderful. We hold them in our prayers. Anyone else? Yes, Bill. Uh, I suppose we should be praying for our neighbor, Mike, uh, Herman Elsky, who passed away. Yes, yes. Our, our parking lot and church properties are down to Yeah, our, our good neighbor, uh, Mike Herman Nowski, passed away. So um, he's, he's, I met him a couple times always. 
friendly, good neighbor. So let's pray for his family. Yes. Absolutely. Anna. Anna Corral. I saw that you wrote Brown. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> we'll correct that. Okay, we'll correct that. Be praying for Anna and the family. Anyone else? Oh, yes. Zakruskis are celebrating an anniversary, 20 years. Wonderful. Congrats. Hope you had fun. fun. Is it? Hope you have a nice dinner out or something. <laughs> Anyone else? All right, let us pray. O oh God, tender and all powerful in love. May all those who are experiencing suffering, either of body or mind or spirit, may they quickly be free from that suffering and from their illness. May those frightened cease to be afraid. May those bound be free. May the powerless find power, and may we think of befriending one another as we seek to fulfill your greatest commandments. May the vulnerable among us, the children, the aged, anyone who's unprotected, may they be shown the way of compassion and hope. May those who find themselves in trackless, worrisome wildernesses be guarded by you, our loving God. And may all swiftly come to experience the fullness of your love, relieving all emptiness and despair. We also pray for our communities, our state, our nation, our world. May the people of this land of, and of all nations be guided in the ways of justice and peace, we all honor one another and serve the common good. May we also know a reverence for the earth as your own creation, O God, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and in your honor and glory. May our leaders seek your guidance and follow your mandates, O God, namely to love you and love all. May all we do be moved by the Spirit of Christ, who lived, taught, and died for the way of compassion, peace, and wisdom. May we seek to emulate and walk this beautiful way, divided, devoted to the way of love and love-infused life. O gracious God, be with us as we continue our worship here and into the week. Be with us, and may you help us be grateful. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, let us sing once more. There's a wideness in God's mercy, number 101. Again,
box on your right as you exit. It's for your tithes, your gifts, your offerings. Please know we are grateful for all you're able to give. And I did, did forget to announce one, one big thing that came along this week is that we were awarded the grant for the emergency repairs of the steeple. And, uh, but thanks to Steve Estola, who actually wrote the grant. So I think we should thank him. And for all involved, we are grateful as well. Please join us in the prayer of gratitude. O oh God, whose richness is not found at the tables of those willing to exchange goods for the sake of acquiring earthly riches but rather is found at the table of extravagant love for neighbor. We entrust these gifts to your care, that they may abound in your steadfast love for all persons. Use them for the building of your beloved community, here on earth as it is in heaven. personally as you enter your week. So let us take 10 seconds to remember that. Oh beautiful God, we pray that the courage of the early mornings dawning that the strength of the midday's eternal hills, that the peace of the evening's sleep, that the love of your ever-present spirit would breathe through our hearts. You love us no matter what, and all is well. Amen.